Hi, welcome. Today we're talking about how CETA and the government of Aruba are paving the way to a safer travel experience. And they're doing that by using verifiable credentials that's based on open source technology and standards. So here with me today, we have two guests. I'll be moderating this discussion for you. Um, let me start off with Yuri. Um, Yuri, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, yes, my name is uh, Yuri Feliciano. I'm uh, the Innovation Advisor for the Minister of Tourism and Health. And I've had it uh, the, for the past two years, um, most of the innovation during COVID. And uh, I have another um, site project as the e-government pilot project manager. And we also have Adrian Wasita. Adrian, would you like to do an introduction? Hello, sure. So my name is uh, Adrien Sanglier. I'm a program manager at uh, CETA Lab. Uh, CETA is the IT provider for the air tra uh, travel industry, uh, connecting uh, airline, airport, and government. And uh, at the lab, we are really the, the research arm of CETA and uh, looking at uh, the blockchain and digital ID uh, research uh, and how it makes sense and value uh, for the industry. And I'm Heather Dahl, I'm CEO of Indicio. What makes this um, session really special is that Adrian, Yuri, and I have been working together for what marks the two year anniversary about this project that really, these are some of the very first conversations we've had um, with others about what we've learned and experienced over the past two years, the significant progress that we have made with verifiable credentials, including contributing back to the open source community. And then what is the path forward with what we've proven and demonstrated and successfully deployed? Um, Adrian, I wanna start with where most people should always begin when developing the verifiable credentials is what was the problem? What, if you can talk to us about the problem that CETA was looking to solve at the very beginning of our collaboration two years ago, can you share that um, for the audience? Sure, so really, uh, I think international travel had become more complicated than ever with the, with the pandemic. I mean, we, we've seen, you know, a lot of uh, inspection of documents and, and uh, uh, even we, we traveled uh, long haul and, um, and we, you, you always have to print a bunch of papers uh, to go to the airport and you're not really sure which one going to be uh, mandatory, which one's going to be used, inspected and, and when, whether you have enough or, or too many. So uh, I think um, the, the, the big problem has been, uh, so everything is was paper-based, uh, the, ch the changing entry requirements also was a, was a big issue. Uh, and um, as, as the systems were not ready, uh, we, the self-service check-in uh, was disabled, uh, whether it was by kiosk or, or online um, or, 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 or mobile. So to fix that, the, the big problem was how can we enable a government to take a, an informed decision about the entry of a, an individual uh, to a given uh, jurisdiction? So we need to enable a conversation between the passenger and the rival government uh, and provide that arrival government with uh, well access to verifiable information. And therefore, we can enable that, uh, that pre-clearance or determination uh, of, of entry ahead of the, of the travel day. And therefore, as a traveler, I can arrive at the airport uh, with a, uh, let's say, a, a safer or a better peace of mind. <laughs> and Yuri, Adrian talks about arriving at the airport with a peace of mind, but it's hard to believe two years ago, the island was closed and arriving at the airport wasn't an option. Can you talk to us about your role in managing public health in order to reopen the island and what was the, the problem the government of Aruba was looking to solve in order to facilitate people arriving back at the airport again? Um, yes, like you said, uh, the, for the first time in, in the Aruba history, the, the airport was closed. Uh, we depend from tourism over 90%. So it was a, a really big shock for the island to close the airport. And just the planning to opening it up um, brings all the exact problems that Adrian was talking about. Um, everybody was used to online check-in, um, not have so much paperwork in hand, especially not coming to Aruba. 
So to Aruba, you would have uh, just jump on the plane and come. That would have been the, the best deal. And now you have all these restrictions, not only on testing, but also on the embarkation, debarkation, things that uh, were not mandatory before the, before the pandemic. But for health, it was, uh, it was uh, a, a tougher, a longer step, I would say, in, in, in sense that we never, we never had any type of um, health check at the airport. So you would um, always come in and uh, there was not, uh, never a, an issue of if you have to be vaccinated, vaccinated, tested or anything like this. So at the first glance, we started um, two years ago, it was testing here at the airport and setting up the system in order for the, the traveler to stay as less possible in quarantine um, as, as, uh, as they are able to. And uh, from then on, you would have all these testing coming in and became a bigger problem on uh, what tests are real, uh, what papers are real, and uh, um, how do we check this? So this was a bigger deal for, for the, not only border control, but for the health um, department in order to cross the border and yeah, roam freely on the island. It was really the, the challenge of trying to manage the massive amount of data that you had to receive and also making sure that it was authoritative data was an undertaking, you know, in a normal year it would be, but during the pandemic, it was an extra challenge. And so what we want to do is uh, take a look at the Aruba Happy Traveler card that we first deployed on the island. And this is a video that we launched one year ago when we first uh, deployed this solution on the island uh, for the first time. So what we'd like to do is play it. Uh, for the audience to take a look at what we accomplished in our first year together. a little bit about what we just watched um, and how that worked a year ago and then what's happened since then. Right, it was already a year ago so uh, <laughs> I think really what um, 
what we demonstrated during this trial and, and this trial with, with, with real people, it was not just a, a, a lab story, um, is that decentralized identity works to exchange health data. Uh, it works on the island, it, it solves an actual problem, it was put on the hands of, of, of people. Um, and well, it, it was simple. Uh, it's, um, you do not need to establish, you know, point-to-point um, uh, -point connections. Uh, of course, it's, it's, it's decentralized. And then it's secure. Uh, why? But, well, it's, it's, it's based on all the cryptographic work that has been done up to now. Uh, of course, relying a lot on Hyperledger. Uh, and finally, it is, um, uh, it is preserving data privacy. Uh, because, well, it's, it follows all the, the, of course, the mechanism and the, the principles of self-sovereign identity. Um, so then once we've proven it works for health data, what we've done was to enrich this, uh, this trust platform, this, this, this mechanism to exchange sensitive data between, between people. Um, and we added um, other issuers from other jurisdictions. So uh, we connected... Um, healthcare providers uh, from Canada, from the US, uh, to so for, for individual to be able to claim the health data using that platform and share them with the government of Aruba. So that before even the, the day of travel, so before the international travel, um, we can achieve our goal, which was uh, pre-clear somebody um, before they go to the airport. Um, and um, that was very interesting because we could exchange uh, so this health information directly to the ETS system that uh, the government of Aruba had in place already. So we're reusing software and, and, and process and, and uh, that was already that were already in place, of course, before the, before this project. Um, and um, the government of Aruba can take, as I said, a determination of uh, of, of entry. Um, and uh, also, which I think is very important, is give a reward to that individual uh, in form of another verifiable credential. Uh, it's a kind of a, a digital receipt, uh, and it is a proof of I am pre-cleared. So what we call the, the trusted traveler credential or the happy traveler account uh, specifically uh, in, in this project. So um, therefore, uh, if I'm the traveler, I, I, I can do all this, uh, the, I can run this process um, ahead of travel, three days before travel. And then I, I'm happy when I go to the airport, I know I've, 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 I have a proof of entry on my wallet and I, I, I won't worry about the next uh, steps in my, in my travel. So Yuri, we really, I mean, created this trusted digital ecosystem um, with this platform. How do you see an ecosystem like this that we proved out how did it benefit the island over the past year? But then also this concept of uh, trusting an ecosystem moving forward now that we're in this new phase of the post-pandemic, if one wants to describe it that way. Um, yeah, well, I think you said before was important also how, the, how much data um, the island was, was receiving and how important it was to, to protect the traveler. We had uh, um, different pilots, not only with CETA, but with uh, other other um, other institutions or entities. And the, the idea was always to have this verifiable um, data that you know it's real and that you know it either comes from the source or a trusted um, uh, middle person. And we started uh, before this project um, gaining ground on others. And you see how hard it was um, to do this especially for a small island on a, let's say, a, some type of a one-to-one. -one. Um, so this was a big, uh, a big part of the decision on, on this project also. Exactly what Adrian was just saying, that how they were connecting to different labs and different institutions within different states that would already collect that data and run that part of the process. And, and then it would be easier for our part of the process to, to, to um, run. And uh, I think that that was very important in the beginning in order to have this verifiable data. Um, and on top of it, it was all this the, the decentralized and, and how you have this credential. Um, so this was something that uh, no other entity or whatever pilot we were running with others had. 
So this was also important. And that you see the, the video and how it was run with real people like Adrian said, but also that how easy it was um, in order just to have this credential in your pocket and be not only there at the store, but also pre-verified because you were already um, held pre-cleared before you came to the island, um, which is, uh, yeah, for a traveler, it was very important for us. And um, also tourism in the type of uh, cancellations or anything like this. So the, that, that was the main point of getting into the project. Now that we are already here, that we know it, it's proven, we, you see um, many more um, ways to use, not only on the health credentials, one of them. Um, again, this is, shows a lot of interoperability um, for the health um, part, um, especially for a small island. We didn't have a lot of interoperability here on the island. And in the past two years, it grew uh, a lot more. But from all that growth, you have a lot of centralization. Um, and this project proves right the opposite, that you can have all this interoperability without going full centralized or um, in many ways to have the, the traveler have the power um, to use this type of credential. So I think moving forward, there is the health part, um, but more importantly for, for tourism, um, I do work for the Minister of Tourism and Health, which was also a, a big, uh, big push for all this innovation and the collaboration that, that we've been doing. But for the tourism part, you see a lot of what Adrian said um, in the first part, um, the pre-clearance itself, that you are able to use these credentials not only for a health verification, but also to pre-clear the border itself and have a much seamless travel experience for sure. Yuri, one of the things that really stood out when we first started collaborating, or I should say two things that really stood out when we first started collaborating was uh, the government of Aruba's commitment to protecting the privacy of the traveler and their health data and also their travel data. And the second thing that really stood out to me, I mean, from the very beginning, was the commitment to open source and open standards as an approach for Aruba, not only with what we were solving, but also the longer term. Why were both of these important to you? Uh, well, it, well, it was new. Um, I think for, for governments, um, it is, uh, especially the part of open source. But one important thing was, uh, I think, uh, Adrian was also saying that about how we... Um, adapt certain parts of the process. So we were able to use open source um, for one part of the process um, and going into other parts that were not um, open source or legacy or anything like this. And I think this helped this project very much that we were able to go ahead with an open source project like this as it covers a certain part of the process. Um, important for us also, especially again for a small island is a uh, vendor lock. Uh, one of the, the nice things about open source, and we did this back in December, was um, using multiple apps for the same wallet and for the same credentials. So this is very important for, for, for us, for budgetary, and shows uh, a new way of um, introducing vendors and software also to the island. And part of the reason why we were able to introduce multiple wallets, for instance, last December, was um, because that commitment to open source and interopathons and et cetera that we've been promoting with that open source community. Adrian, from our very first conversation two years ago, it was CETA's position that you really wanted the foundation um, of this type of solution built to open source and open standards. And when we were running the deployment a year ago, a very interesting development happened when we were in the midst of that, and that would be with Linux Foundation Public Health. So maybe you can talk to us a bit more about why open source Tracita and then what that led to. Right. So uh, to start with, uh, I would say um, adoption is always a uh, big challenge uh, in uh, decentralized identity. Um, you, you need that critical mass uh, from which you get really the, the value of the, uh, of the ecosystem. Um, and and we, we've seen that also from previous research because we've been, uh, you know, uh, investigating the, the value of ecosystem and decentralized identity for, for, for industry as a, as a whole. And uh, we've seen quickly that transparency, 
and trust is is the key uh, to get uh, to to this uh, level of adoption we 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 want to be. So how does that work? Well, it, it with all the stakeholders involved, it comes with transparency and 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 therefore open source was our natural choice. And um, we have to keep in mind that. Um, the air travel uh, community is, is uh, represent many stakeholders with very different uh, jobs, I would say, and roles uh, for the, the traveler journey. Uh, we, we have uh, so airline, airports, all the, the, the handlers, the company involved, the security and um, uh, specialized uh, company, uh, and, and finally the government. So, representing a very uh, diverse industry we need also to be very neutral and um, and that's also why we've been uh, naturally towards uh, an open source uh, based uh, implementation um, and from this it was also very uh, obvious that we would give back uh, to the open source community and that's why we we decided uh, after well we got the, the first successes i mean we've proven the technology works to um, to solve that problem uh, that cita will uh, donate the the code uh, used for the trial uh, to linux foundation and that gave birth to uh, cardia and does as i said the, the umbrella of linux foundation public health uh, because it was all about exchanging health data uh, between all the, the, the participants um, and that's uh, today that's an active community uh, and it's uh, very uh, heartwarming to see that uh, many uh, and more and more uh, organizations and, and, and individuals are joining this this, uh, this company and uh, we the, we meet every every Thursday and uh, there's also a lot of um, um, cardia interoperation also when we demonstrate interoperability uh, it, it is a key uh, I mean we, we want uh, I think today we we cannot see uh, conquer the world plans by a single organization anyway. So uh, the key is interoperability and uh, and focus on, um, on on what's what's there really. Um, so um, it, uh, I mean uh, that's um, uh, the, the, the big success is seeing that community growing uh, definitely under the, the the umbrella of Linux the Linux Foundation. And that's what was so awesome about this, like Gary talked about, is we've not only grown this project between all of us on, on you know, in the session right now, but the Interoperathon helped um, seed interoperability, for instance, the Liquid Avatar wallet, the ID ramp wallet, all work within the system because of Cardia as that anchoring point. One of the things, whether it's the Interoperathon or all the trials, deployments, meetings, everything that we've gone through for the last two years, I think there are a lot of folks watching this session who are saying, I'm about to embark on maybe my first trial, my first MVP demo, and what I want to know is what you learned, um, since you, we could be, you know, ahead of a number of folks on this. And so, Yuri, what words of wisdom lessons learned would you impart um, to those who are watching this saying what can I learn from you to help me succeed going forward? Yeah, uh, persistence, of course, uh, that's uh, number one. And I think in the last session I said uh, trust Heather. Uh, that was uh, uh, one of the big ones also. I think it's uh, um, especially for us um, in the beginning, it's it's some it was something um, new, and um, specifically for the government, um, it was unseen. You know, uh, so open source. You're talking uh, um, uh, verifiable credential, decentralization, and all these things that uh, normally a government would not take. So, uh, yeah, my my main advice for person doing in in my position. Uh, what's your pace? What's your pace? Um, it was important for, for me and for Sita um, and Heather and Indicia to see how far we go at each certain point. So, and not to overstep, but also not to lose our momentum um, and uh, just kept going. Uh, but um, yes, and yeah, the other thing is it's a lot of technical stuff for sure, but uh, um, we were very happy to have Indicio on this, so so that was uh, well covered. In most of other projects, you have a lot more technical um, discussions than we did in this one. 
for sure with uh, with Indicio and Cita. Um, so yeah, be persistent for sure. I think Adrian, we all like to think progress is a straight line up and to the right, but as Yuri referenced, ours was a little bit more of a twist and turn to the right, upper right. And um, what advice do you have uh, for people listening in on this session about succeeding with verifiable credentials? Right, so yeah, definitely not a straight line indeed, but a uh, very rewarding <laughs> journey anyway. Um, so um, I would say, um, well, first, uh, make sure you, you do your, your due diligence on data, uh, because yeah, just enough is perfect. Um, for example, um, the government of, of Aruba, or well, the immigration agency, will likely need all the information on, on the passenger identity, of course, because there is a legislation and a policy saying, well, I, I need to be sure I, I'm talking to the, to, to the right person and, 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 and identify that person family. Uh, however, uh, if I am the, the, the owner of uh, a touristic venue or a hotel receptionist or, uh, or the waiter at a, at a casino, I might not need all your information about, about yourself. Uh, especially in a context where there is a health requirements. Uh, my job is to make sure, you know, uh, the, the, the players on my, and the employees are all safe. So um, I, I wouldn't look into all the individual personal information. I just want to know whether the government of Aruba, and, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm working on this jurisdiction, um, approved this person to, uh, to gather publicly. Um, and, um, and that's, that, answers the needs of, of all the stakeholders in the in a given ecosystem. Um, and, and that's the beauty of verifiable credentials too. You can reveal, uh, you, you can answer a question without revealing the actual uh, information with zero knowledge proof. So uh, we largely uh, used this feature and that, that provided a, a lot of value also to solve that, that, that problem. So, um, so focus on what you, you need on, on the data. Uh, and just what you what you need. Um, finally, the, so the second piece of advice I would say is uh, we talk about that interoperability. I think that, uh, that that's key. Um, there's, there's no no single provider, uh, so make sure you 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 work on against standards. You 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 develop on uh, you know standardized uh, 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 protocol methods. Um, and uh, be open uh, also to other networks uh, and uh, and build on top of what has been has been there. Uh, then one um, one thing I, I used to, to say is there's no magic on decentralized identity. Um, uh, what you what we are doing is uh, finally a digitalization of current processes, um, and you need to reach a certain level also of automation because. It, this is only when it is automated, it provides value to that process. Uh, so you still need to integrate APIs and data and, and, and work on processes uh, to, reach, to reach that value. So, um, so you still have to spend time on your CISO assessment, on integration, on, on tests. On, it's a normal IT project. <laughs> um, and finally, uh, and I would say uh, make sure you dedicate enough time on your project um, on educating all your stakeholders um, because the model is so simple uh, <laughs> on decentralized identity that people would not believe it at the first glance. Um, so make sure you, you create uh, collaterals and, and videos and, and presentation and you talk to people about that famous triangle of trust um, so that people understand it. Uh, and, and then you will likely get uh, more and more value uh, out of your, of your projects. I couldn't agree with you more, Adrian. The amount of time that we spent on education, but also marketing and communications um, far exceeded the, what we first thought would be needed because you're right, it's so simple, but in one sense, people are saying, okay, can I hear it again? Can I learn more? And so communications and marketing of this is really important. And I think, um, where it really came to be was a few days ago, you know, Yuri, um, Aruba prides itself as one happy island, but I think we had one happy moment a few uh, days ago when um, CETA and Aruba and DCO won the Kupinger Cole European Identity and Cloud Conference Award for verifiable credentials. 
talk to us about that and how um, you see that award um, providing meaningful validation for everyone moving forward. So that's that's for me. <laughs> oh, that's for for Yuri. Oh, so for you. Um, okay. is, um, <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, I think Adrian should go first because he accepted the sure. award. He has a full speech <laughs> already. Um, but I wanted to say uh, one thing from, from uh, one of the lessons and, and Adrian was mentioning is this part of the process. I think one thing that I've learned and, and especially in the last two years is this type of compartmentalization of the processes. So that we only did a, a specific part. It's an IT project. You have to connect, you have to integrate, but we did only that part without affecting the other parts. And, 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 and when, as we moved along, we did another part that was not even connected to the, maybe the first part. But uh, I, I, I think that, that is very important that you have that um, specific process done and integrated, and then we can we continue. For the award, yes, it was, uh, um, as I think as the three of us know, it was a surprise, a very happy surprise. Um, but it was very nice to see um, at the conference, like-minded and, and um, very high-level uh, uh, networking um, events um, that understood the project. And not only understood, but also in a way say, oh, this is what we have to do, or this is the future. Um, and I think for, for Adrian and, and, and us, it was a, a, a little uh, um, yeah, shocking because we are already doing it. Um, so that is very hard sometimes uh, for someone to tell, you, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's what we have to do, but yes, we're already doing it. So it's a shock and um, I'm still, I'm still uh, on a high from it for sure. And uh, trying to, to just keep educating. I think that that is a very important thing that Adrian said also, just this part of the education that, that we did and that we keep doing right now, that we have to keep doing, especially with the help of the award. Adrian, you were the one who accepted the award but on behalf of all of the teams. Um, and you talked about your vision because really CETA had been working on verifiable credentials before the pandemic. Um, and so this approach and what we were recognized for stems many years in the making. Um, can you talk to us a bit more about that vision and the award and your words of wisdom going forward beyond for air travel? Yeah, so there was a, a very big uh, emotional moment, <laughs> and it was great to uh, to share it uh, with you, with you both. So, um, uh, really, um, I, the that that vision about you know um, streamlining all the the steps of the, uh, of the long haul trip has been there for for a long time. Many people have been working also on this. I mean. Uh, it's it's we know it's a next challenge uh, for the air travel industry, um, and and why is this? Well, if you you go on a, on a trip, a business trip or leisure trip, uh, think about the number of times you you take your passport out of your pocket and, and disclose all your your personal information to to people you do not necessarily know or or, or trust even. <laughs> um, think about, uh, you know, uh, well, you open your passport page to all the security agents, the checking agent from the airline, and maybe the baggage handler and the hotel receptionist and the car rental waiter and, and, um, and so on. So um, um, really today, international travel is like uh, shooting your name, you know, on the street and, and your marital status and you, where you live. And uh, <laughs> um, so, the, and all of these with a lot of cues and, and, um, and, and, and it's starting, uh, and especially, you know, more now with uh, the context of the pandemic and post-pandemic. Um, so what can we do about that? And um, that's why uh, CETA and CETA Lab, we, we made a big bet on, on variable credentials. And, uh, and I think with your word, we, we're starting to see we made the, the, the right bet. <laughs> um, and that was, uh, that was the good news. Um, and so I would say for the, the years to come or the months to come is, um, as the variable credential are reusable, um, how can we use uh, them once they are validated and approved by an authority, such as, uh, well, the government of Aruba, immigration says, uh, yes, you're, you are this person. Uh, because uh, the identity information was, was, was verified, because it was uh, 
it was in a, it could be exchange in the form of a variable credential. Then I can reuse it to with all the steps in the travel continuum. Uh, so um, the the car rental, for example, might need to know whether you you you, you actually entered uh, the, the the country. So that I don't know, they can prepare the car. Uh, the hotel receptionist can then you know combine. Uh, your identity will just name and surname do not need to know much more but knowing that this information has been already verified and trusted by the government of Aruba creates higher value and can be combined with uh, the, um, the proof of your booking and then uh, you can proceed to uh, automated check-in at the at the hotel so this is all about um, uh, making the trip uh, seamless and more private um, and, and leveraging this power of verifiable credential or reusable and can also be derived from a trust anchor, what we call the trust anchor. In, the, in this vision we have, um, it, is, it is something that is absolutely transformational and it can also be daunting. And I think that gets out all what Yuri was saying too, is we really started simple and for those who are thinking about going down this path, I think we would all encourage you is just start building, start simple and build, and that there's no need to wait for the next great thing or the next shiny object or the next thing that's gonna be better because all the code that was used exists today and is available today and is an open source. And so those listening have everything right now to start building and to do it in incremental steps to have collaboration partners that work with you every step of the way and the stakeholders can be internal to your company. They can be partnerships like um, our three organizations have. And I would say from my standpoint, I've been working in this space for quite a few years now. And the work that we did over the past two years has been the most, one of the most professionally rewarding experiences because we got in there we built, we learned, we challenged each other, and we kept pushing forward. And it was about tenacity to get to the point that we um, had that recognition by EIC. And it probably also made that recognition um, even more exciting for us because we know that what we had um, experienced to get to that point and the ground that we broke together it's been an absolute one of the best experiences working with you, your teams, um, our team putting this all together. And so I encourage those listening, if you want to learn more, you can go to cardia.app um, for more information. Um, you can also see um, a number of the materials and collateral that CETA and Aruba have released uh, talking about this or by all means, um, we have social media profiles you can reach out directly. So I do want to say thank you, Yuri and Adrian, for taking this time out. And for everyone that has joined us in this session, we appreciate you being here. So enjoy the rest of the conference and thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.